Ready? Hey, Seth. <laughs> hey, Spurge. <laughs> how are you doing today? I'm good. How are you? Doing well, doing well. Good. And here we are on episode four of Baselines of Banter. <laughs> All right, we have Savannah White here, stylist of the stars. <laughs> Stop it. <laughs> All right, so, Sav. Spurge. We're going to go ahead and get it down real efficiently. Ooh. <laughs> I like your style. Yeah, I got to get my like awkward banter out that I can yeah, actually yeah, talk. Yeah, yep, I like it. It's like, Let all it right, out. I'm holding a mic once you get over the fact that you're holding the mic. <laughs> yeah, slightly awkward. Super but... good. All right, now, okay. but, so we have Sav here, who's a stylist. Yes. Yes? Yes. And we're going to go ahead and start with how you came to New York, first off. Hi. I, uh, this October, it's going to be like seven years. Hey. I know. It flies by. Um, so I guess like seven years ago, um, I came like for the summer to like intern or try it out. I'm from like a really small town in Arkansas. And then I was like, Shouts out. I, I want to do something like cool. So I came to New York. Uh, interned uh, in a fashion doing PR, which I like hated, but still, I like love New York. I went home for like maybe a month, ended up selling all of my shit <laughs> and just moved back. I didn't like really know anybody um, besides like one person, ended up moving back, started interning at Marie Claire magazine um, for a while, was waiting tables at night, you know, like doing my thing. And um, I don't know. It's like styling was like never like 100% the goal. It's just kind of, I've been super open to any opportunity and people that come my way. And it's just kind of developed into like what it is. I didn't even know coming from Arkansas that that is like a career that you can support yourself, like yeah. even doing. Um, so yeah, so I was in a magazine for a while. And then eventually, you know, I was like, okay, I've got to find some way to like, support myself by doing fashion at the time. And uh, so yeah, I got a job doing like e-commerce, you know, working for a website and fashion and um, it, you know, just kind of developed from there. I met people and then I guess for about like four years now, I've been completely freelance and working for myself and Fuck. yeah. Yo, <clears throat> that's a lot of drive. Yeah. <laughs> Especially, so you, did you have like a general, like you just wanted to come because of New York or like? I like just think there was, I didn't really know what I wanted to do. There's just like this idea of a city and I just knew exciting things were happening there and I wanted to be involved in that. Um, Where were you getting that concept of New York? Was it from like television or like the internet? Like, I don't know. Like, yeah, I didn't know like really anything about it. I came and actually my first two weeks in New York, like taking the subway, doing anything, I completely overwhelmed me and I thought like I made the wrong decision. I was like, oh shit, can I really do this? <laughs> Um, Logo from Arkansas. Yes. And then I was like, well, I've sold all my shit. I don't have a car. I can't go back. So um, I don't know. I feel like you end up like meeting your people or like creating, I don't know. Like, You're like mad casual about that. I feel like not a lot of people would just like, be able, like sell all their now, shit. And, it's like... wild as the older I get. It sounds wild to me. But at the time you like make these decisions not that I'm old, but like when you're like young, you're just like, okay, yeah, hell yeah, I can do that. You yeah, just like, yeah. ha, you're just like, I don't know, you're like brave about doing whatever it is you want to do. And I just like made it, I don't know, I made it happen. I did, yeah. That's super cool. Yeah, it's random. Uh, let's see, so you're, obviously your drive has gotten you to an amazing place you're right now yeah. where you're like self, not only like self-sustaining yourself, mm -hmm. but you're also, you know, working in a field kind of like on the upper level for what yeah. you're doing yeah. in like kind of a short period of time, especially since you didn't really go to school for this in particular. No. Mm -hmm. Did you go to school or do you No, kinda... I have like a degree in speech communications and marketing, which is so hey. random. But at the time, again, I didn't really know what I wanted to do. So yeah. I was like, this feels broad. I mean, it's also like being from the South, that's kind of what you do. You don't know any different. There aren't these like avenues for you. Um, to explore, like really being creative, okay. um, just because there's like no real access to it, or I didn't see other people doing it. Like yeah. there's nobody influencing you 
to believe that. So it's like, oh, you go to college. And then, you know, I was just doing the proper steps. So, yeah, yeah, yeah. I have a degree. And no, I didn't go to school to study fashion or anything. That's, yeah. So what was kind of the breaking point for you? From, I guess, because you said you were, you know, you're working at an e-commerce place and yeah. you started working sort of like at fashion companies yeah, yeah. more in like a, a different capacity. Yeah. When did you, what was sort of the switch? Like, was somebody like, yo, Sav, like, are you trying to style? Did you go out on your own? Did you have like friends hit you up and ask you or like, how did, yeah. what was the transition like there even? I mean, it was hard. Again, like, I didn't, I've never really had a mentor. Like, a lot of people have mentors or somebody to kind of show you the proper steps. I don't know if where I'm at now, that was the longer road to take, you know, because I, it's all been trial and error, and I do things, and I've learned from things that don't work. And But um, I knew going freelance, like... For a stylist point of view, it's like, yeah, you want to build an aesthetic, you want to have like a website or something to show your work. So uh, when I first went freelance, I was still assisting some like other stylists that I admired or I had met when I was doing e-com. Um, God, I know it sounds like crazy to think like people ask all the time and I say it like it's so easy and it's yeah. not. But from there, um, I just kind of started acquiring my own clients. Um, I don't know. It's, it's like I'm still, I don't feel like I'm still, I'm still just doing every day and like going yeah. to the next thing, but it's like kind of developed to where I can fully support myself. I have clients, but um, yeah, I got like my first magazine work, like when I went freelance from Nylon Magazine, shout out, RIP. Hey, um, so <laughs> Nylon was kind of like the first one? Yeah. Okay. Um, an editor there gave me like my first opportunity to have print work, um, which even then, four years ago, was a much bigger deal than it kind of is now, because like I don't, nobody really knows where um, the world of print is even going anymore. But at the time, it was a massive deal to like be able to have that opportunity. So I styled the shoot from them, yeah. and um, yeah, it just kind of kept developing really from there. Once Crazy. I got that. So since that point, also cause for anybody who's not aware of you and your work, yeah. what are some of the other clients that you've worked with? that people should be aware of or um, kind of like get an idea of your range? Yeah, um, I guess from an editorial or like um, a magazine or print standpoint, um, Nylon, Teen Vogue, uh, Interview Magazine, Flaunt, uh, Brick Magazine, which is a really dope London-based magazine um, that covers music artists, La Officiale I've been doing a lot of work with. Yeah, it's kind yeah. of like that was great. And then... Um, I mean, I have, like, commercial clients in terms of I've done, you know, Nike, Reebok, Puma. Um, I don't know. Yeah. yeah. And then you know, working with artists, which I've just kind of, like, kept open again. Like, I haven't tried to, like, work solely on one thing. You know, some stylists prefer they want to be known as being an editorial stylist and having, like, incredible work, like editorial and print work. I've just tried to be open to, like, and evolving with the fashion industry as it changes okay. to whatever that kind of looks like. Yeah. Um, yeah. And, and so with that, because um, you also work with a lot of musicians yeah. through, like, editorial work and, I guess, yeah. personal as well. Um, one, I guess, who are some of the musicians you've worked with? Mm -hmm. And also, what do you, what is kind of the convergence on that? Like, you, you were talking about the industry evolving. Like, what's going on with, like, particular relationship with music as someone who's also done that? Yeah. And fashion right now. Um, so some of the music artists I've worked with, I've worked with Sampha, um, Black, French Montana. I'm working with a really dope girl now named Melly, signed Interscope. Um... This guy named Sonny, he's dope. Hey. Um, <laughs> no, so um, it's an interesting process, actually, because I feel like artists don't really need any more um, publication so much. There's so many social media platforms for artists to have their own brand and their own aesthetic that they don't really need um, that push for magazines anymore. So when it's collaborating with them, um, I feel like that process is more or less aligning with what their aesthetic is. I do when I do editorials with artists, like, um, I do like to show artists in a way that is like not predictable, like that sometimes is like an interesting way of viewing somebody that you haven't seen them do before. That's cool. Um, so I try and do that. But again, it, a lot of that is collaborating with whatever their own aesthetic already is because they want to stick to that. They've like created something and... So yeah, it's like interesting. It's like, yeah. Uh, that's cool. Um, so can you also give me a kind of, <clears throat> for like people who similarly aren't aware of something 
like styling, like you said, you weren't yourself. Yeah. What kind of like is your role or what's like the day to day or like yeah. what, what maybe are like misconceptions people have about the job even, you know? There's nothing glamorous <laughs> about this job. Aside from like when the work finally comes out that you're like waiting months to come out sometimes. Um, it's like a brief like instant gratification or like gratification from like being able to like, you know, showcase your work that you've worked hard on. But it's it's a lot of lugging bags around. So working for yourself in general, I commend anybody that can do it. It's hard. Um, you know, you're the spokesperson for yourself in terms of like coming up with how much you should be getting paid, what your worth is, like how, you know, your time. Um, but there's nothing glamorous. It's a lot of me. I'm a bag lady. I'm a permanent bag lady. I'm always lugging bags yeah. around. I live in a walk-up. Uh, so <laughs> it's a lot of my apartment being like crammed with clothing and shit too. But um, yeah, there's nothing super glamorous about the job um, until the work actually yeah. comes out. But. Is there kind of like a difference when you're working with maybe like for an artist versus like a corporate client? Like are people like, yo, I just want you to make me look dope. Or like people have like a very specific vision or like... Usually when dealing on a commercial level with clients, it gets very specific. And in that case, um, your, create, your creativity is like a little, I don't know, like less important in that case. You are trying to kind of please a client. Obviously, they're paying you to execute a job. Yeah, yeah. Where with an artist, I feel like there's more opportunity um, to at least collaborate or, yeah, they're like, make me look dope or I trust your vision. I like other work you put out. Um, but yeah, I think in a commercial setting, it's a little more restricting. Not that it's always a bad thing. I think if you can execute what somebody's vision is, it's also like a good trait to have because um, commercial work is where the money's at. So, yeah, um, yeah, yeah. yeah. Okay. Cool. Yeah. Cool. Um, let's see. Let's let's just do kind of like, because I want to I want to pause on like taste, yeah. particularly what you think taste is or the importance of it. Um, so that's gonna be the next question. But yeah. a, a really, a, like, we'll do a quick one. You've been here for seven years. Um, what are some like s cool secret spots that you find really good options for clothing? Boy. <laughs> um. I wouldn't say they're like secret spots. I feel like most people know about Dover Street Market. Do you know about okay. Dover Street Market? No, I don't. <laughs> you do now. So I'm not in the know. You do now. <laughs> um, I, I just think they're, I mean, it's a retail space. Um, they have them in like other major cities, like London, Japan. Um, okay. They just have like, I mean, I would say like designer clothing and stuff, but they do such a nice job. They have like installations within the space. They Their visuals and their showcasing of clothing is really well done. So not only can you go there and like find new designers or things like that, you also can get inspired just by the space in general. Nice. Um, I like that. Um, I don't know. I spend you have any? You have any uh, budget ones for people who are like five dollars and under here? Like, what's your budget? Listen, for? you know I hit an L train. <laughs> yep. I like an L train. Um, vintages also can be so pricey in New York. I feel like. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I always said that. I'm like, New York is like, or vintage in New York is for like rich people. Like, it's expensive. Yes. L train is good though. Yeah, yeah, I love I'm trying that. Trying to think of like another decent. I don't know. L trains never really steer me wrong, and they yeah. have different locations. True, true. That Bushwick one's kind of getting trash, though. Yeah, I mean, there's so many, yeah, sorry, tourists. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, always coming sorry, through. <laughs> That's what I was going to oh, say. The Park, yeah. the park Slope one Maybe is a little hidden Maybe we won't say it for the tourists. <laughs> 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 we won't give that go one to, away. Go to the Bushwick yeah, one. Go to the Bushwick fantastic. one. Go to the Morgan L. <laughs> it's amazing. Oh, yeah. That really hit that. Yeah. Um... <laughs> <laughs> um are pretty good yeah. for clothing, yeah. Cool. So then go, jumping back to the previous question, like, what do you think is the importance of taste, especially, like, within your creativities? <laughs> or, like, what is taste to you, I guess, you know? What is taste, you know? It's like, I don't know, it's a weird one. I, I don't know, I feel like how do you, I don't know, not even critique or say, like, there's a taste level, you know, because... Okay. Interprets like style and how they dress themselves or how they want to be perceived in a different way. So, yeah, true. And, and there's a lot of things, there's a lot of ways people dress it. Like, I don't dress that way, and that's not my taste, but I can still yeah. appreciate it. Yeah, yeah. Um, 
Uh, I don't know. Like, like, I don't know that... Do you know what, like, your taste is? Especially, like, looking at your portfolio of, like, work. Do you kind of, like, like what, yeah, um, what do you think kind of, like, makes you you I've do that? always enjoyed mixing, like, streetwear or... I always say, like, the high-low, but I enjoy mixing designer pieces with, like, lower-end, like, or, you know, like vintage pieces or like random like a Hanes t-shirt like I've always just enjoyed like that juxtaposition okay. of having like this high and low okay. and streetwear in some way I've always incorporated so I feel like in terms of styling and the way I also dress that is kind of my taste I guess is like mixing in that kind of streetwear casual with like classic high end pieces um, All right. I don't know what that says about my taste but no, yeah, that's yeah. yeah I guess that's how I enjoy to dress that's how I enjoy to style Okay. If given the opportunity, um, yeah. All right, so my next killer up question here. What? What are you wearing? You know, <laughs> speaking of a high low. <laughs> uh, <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I'm wearing Doc Martin's Python. There we go, there we go. Um, <laughs> these pants are old Dries Van Noten, so a designer piece. Nice, this shirt don't know that. I ordered probably on Alibaba, to be honest. There was five dollars. Ooh, shout out to designer but I Alibaba. I mainly got it to wear with the vest, which is um, baggy. Okay, all right. Um, which I co founded with. I was going to say, um, what is baggy? My friend Rachel, shout out. Nice. Uh, but, so yeah, so that's pretty much what I'm wearing. Um, cool. This vest we recently did, we're calling it the fishing vest. Okay. Um, so baggy is a line. Um, I wouldn't say it's just a clothing line. Like, we joke and say it's kind of like a way of life or a lifestyle. But I I would say November of this last year is when we did the official launch, like, had the psycho. But my friend Rachel, um, who I've known for years throughout the fashion industry, um, we vibes like years ago during fashion week and we both just wore kind of like baggy silhouette clothing and you know when you kind of see someone you're like fuck yeah, yeah i yeah, like the way you dress same taste. I, yeah i see you <laughs> so that's how we kind of vibed and then we always knew we wanted to collaborate on something and we've like come up with ideas we didn't really follow through and then Wait, like somehow the concept of calling ourselves the baggy boys became this thing we made okay. a, a decision that we were going to dj which <laughs> Didn't really go too far. Um, and we were going to call Until ourselves tonight. the Baggy Boys. So then we were like, well, we've got to have a line with merch and all this stuff. And we'll just call it Baggy. So that's kind of how it started. But it, it's also kind of perfect for us. We're just like cheeky and it's like lighthearted. But it's... we dress in like baggy, like what people would consider ill-fitting clothing. That's okay. like how I feel confident. And that's how we dress. And we hope that people wear our stuff like also feel badass and empowered to like i don't know do whatever you want to do it's That's just, cool so you yeah. have the vest yes. you also have um we have this vest we have a fire puffer vest it's fall let's get into it you're gonna need a layering piece um Max. we have some sets like we have trousers that are slightly similar um it's like a cargo pant and like a couple different colorways um how we kind of even started was uh, we kind of were geeking out about um, Bitcoin and cryptocurrency becoming like, it, it almost became a trending thing. It wasn't even to yeah. financially invest. It was yeah. like everybody was talking about it. So we're like, let's kind of like, not make fun of it, but like create this t-shirt as like a joke. So we made this t-shirt that has like <laughs> flaming Bitcoin balls on it and all this stuff, um, you know, discussing the idea of like cryptocurrency and like where that's at within like the fashion industry. So we wore them during fashion week and that became like the thing. Okay, but nice. um, well, yeah. And so you've, both, you've had some other people wear baggy. Yes. Recently as well, right? um, so I try and incorporate it when I style. Um, we've had Sasha Lane wear it for cover of flaunt. She's amazing. And Aquafina wore it. Oh, nice. uh, we just recently had Normani wear it. Ooh. And it's, it's weird. Cause I feel like it's, it's been an organic thing. Not to say we have like a person we're targeting, but they all feel very baggy. We're like, y'all are super dope. You're working on incredible stuff and they yeah. wore it. So it's just like, I don't know. And, and again, when you shoot an editorial, we didn't know if photos were gonna make the magazine and they've all made yeah. it in um, the spread. So we've just gotten like- I was gonna say you had a Vogue article, right? Yeah. yeah. Um, so we've just been like super lucky to get some of the support we've had and um, 
yeah, we're, again, we're just kind of like leaving it open. It's like a fun, creative space for us to like make things that we want to wear. Mainly, it was like, I want to wear this. I'm just going to make it. So, it, yeah, it's just kind of developing and like taking its own, you know, it has its own pace and we're just like letting whatever happen with it happen. But, yeah. Hey, that's sick. And that's fresh. I need mine. Ooh, ooh, <laughs> yes, Burge, we got to get you the vest. <laughs> ASAP. So... You recently styled your first feature film, too, I heard, right? I did. I, I saw there's some IMDb credits involved as well. Oh, there was. <laughs> <laughs> no, I'm just kidding. <laughs> yes, I'm so excited. I didn't, uh, so maybe two Decembers ago now, like right before, I don't even know the dates, but the day after Thanksgiving, like two Thanksgivings ago, um, I took on this project. Uh, it's directed by this awesome director, Jason Lester. Um, cast is phenomenal. I've never done anything like this. Like, I've styled music videos. And at first I didn't take it because I was just, it felt like an overwhelming thing. It's an indie film. You have to understand it's like low budget. Yeah. It was like three and a half weeks of me taking away from other work, um, which makes me nervous just being freelance, you know, and turning down other things. But I just felt like I kind of needed to do it to push myself, and I'm so glad I did. It's definitely, like, the hardest. I feel like I've worked on something nice. that felt to be incredibly overwhelming, and to accomplish it is just like, yes. Oh, yeah. Um, but, yeah, so it's got... Um, yeah, it's a movie called High Resolution. Um, it hits certain theaters in November. Um, yeah, it's this amazing film. Uh, the lead two people in it's uh, great actors, Justin Chong and Ellie Bamper. They're incredible. There's amazing other actors in it. And it wasn't even supposed to develop into being so, like, fashion heavy. And, um, like, they had always talked, I guess, for a while when reading over the script about, like, Justin, the main talent, being in, like, one look throughout the film. It developed into him having, like, 17 outfits. Damn. So... <laughs> um, and the visuals are gonna be like just super trippy and like visually appealing that I feel like with the wardrobe being, it's kind of wild. Um, yeah, I'm just really excited for it to be on, for people to see it. That's cool. That's I know cool. it's wild that I'm like, it's a full film. This yeah. isn't like a short, this is 96 like, I mean, it's minutes. It's like big ass screens. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. So um, yeah, sick. November. Nice. We're, we need to go see it in October, but. <laughs> That's yeah, I was gonna say, we're going up to, to watch it, aren't we? Yes. <laughs> yeah. Oh yeah. So what do you, because that was a, a pretty momentous, I guess, like occasion in your career. Yeah. Is there anything you're targeting that you want to do? Because you've already done so much. I know. Is there anything you're like, I really would love to do this, or like I would love to work with this person, or like, is there anything in particular you have in terms of a goal at this moment? It's weird. I mean, I'm, I am like, hate to say that there's like not, I'm just like kind of going with the flow and like whatever is coming in comes in. Um, I, I mean, even the thought of like possibly doing more film, like, yeah, I enjoy taking photos as well on the side. I would love to eventually, I enjoy like, I mean, this is so far removed from what I do, but like I'm involved in like the animal space and animal rescue. And I eventually want to do like a photo essay on some things revolving around that. Okay. So just constantly trying to like expand what I'm doing creatively and just putting things out, I think that's more important than anything. That's always been hard for me because you're obviously your own worst critic. Yeah. Um, even with Baggy has been like such a like great, I don't know, like learning experience and lesson for me getting comfortable putting out things and it being okay. However anybody feels about it, like I love it. So yeah. I just think in general, I just want to keep pushing like whatever feels good to me creatively and like collaborating with other like-minded people and see wherever that goes. Nice, it shall that's cool. go. It seems like, I mean, you mm -hmm. have like, or yeah, five minutes? Cool. You have like an, an exceptional drive. Thank you. As well as like an ability to kind of just like you said, just like go with the flow. Do you have any particular advice, either from your experiences or like your outlook that you would give to somebody else who might be trying to sell all their shit and move to New York without a specific plan, but knowing that they want to like make something of their time and themselves? I think it's super important to research. Like in the beginning, I would sit at home on my computer and research photographers with a similar aesthetic that I had. Let's just say in terms of styling. Say you want to create aesthetic or you see something that you visually like that somebody else is doing. I would research photographers that I want to work with. And then it's like sending out mass emails, you know, to people. It was like, 
I did a lot of research just on that end to be like, who do I even want to work with? Who do I admire? And just trying to surround myself with those people. Yeah. Um, I think that's really important. Um, yeah, I mean, it's it's a lot of like, again, I've shot and done so many shoots and like things and a lot of things that people haven't ever even seen or that I'm like, maybe not as technically proud of, but I just think it's important to like work and put out things, research who you want to be working with, work under people that you admire, you're gonna learn. Um, I did a lot of like free work and interning um, that I feel like it's weird, like I don't know that that work ethic is like that present anymore, but it's like, you have to do that stuff. Yeah. Um, yeah, I research, okay. put things out. Yeah. Research. <laughs> Just do your research, kids. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah. Uh, so very quickly, you're also part of This Is Not A Club. Uh, that I am. Which is the team that is producing this, that we're on right now. Thank you, This Is um, Not A Club. Do you want to maybe talk about what it is that this is that we're doing? <laughs> Okay, well, separately based. So, I could say how I became knowledgeable of This Is Not A Club. So, Sunny, who is listening to us right now, uh, he's an amazing artist. Um, but he was wearing a sweatshirt once that he put out. I loved it. I thought it was, like, from some, like, website. And we're, like, eating. And I was like, where's your sweatshirt? And he was like, oh, like, oh, I'm not going to tell you where it's from. So he made it, and he was like putting out his own clothing, and it was dope, like super, super dope. He wasn't selling any of it, but it was under the name, This Is Not A Club. Okay. Um, and so he always just kind of had that, and then we had our meeting to kind of, you know, and I feel like this is a group of friends more than anything, but um, to kind of further this vision that I feel like was Sunny starting, This Is Not A Club, um, that we're all weirdly involved in. Um, I don't know. Sonny, what is this? It's not a club. This is not a club. <laughs> That's the question. It's uh, more questions unpacking the questions. <laughs> anyone is welcome, you know? Like, I don't know. We're just, and then Spurge, um, who's also an amazing artist. Um, Thank you. DJ, you do everything, literally. He's sewn my shirts for Baggy um, and screen printed. Um, and then you want to do bass lines and banter, which I think is incredible. Yeah. And um, this is not a club, was just a way to kind of, I feel like, further push your vision for bass lines and banter, which I think <laughs> is so sick. Thank you for having me. But yeah, yeah. I don't know. I feel like it's a collective. Of, it started as a collective of friends. Yeah. Um, to further push each individual's creative endeavors. <laughs> So Which like we it. are doing. We are doing it. It's happening right now. And we're now. all putting out. I couldn't honestly be more proud to like be a part of it because I feel like everybody contributes and has something to contribute, but it's also just like putting out incredible stuff. Yeah, I almost facts. said shit, but it's not shit. It's yeah, yeah. incredible work. And um, yeah, that's what that's yeah. what this is. Nice. You're, you're getting Everyone applause. come to Kinfolk <laughs> when Spurge does this. You won't regret it. Uh, we're it's here. Mad. It looks like it's mad fun. Yeah, we got some people here. Back there. Yeah. <laughs> um, nice. Yeah. That's cool. Good. That's what we're doing. All right. So I think we're about done. Yeah. We're gonna do uh, the last question. Then we're gonna do the gift. What's um, the question? Last question is who should we have on here next? Should we what? Have on here next. Like who do you think would be good to have on here? Yeah, we should have another one here, right, in this space? Yeah, but like who should we have here? Oh. <laughs> Well, well, well. <laughs> Shit. This it can be shooting for the stars. Anybody, yeah. I would love, and he's not in the music space, but I would love if we, you interviewed Bill Murray. Bill Murray? Yeah, I fucking love Bill Murray. How epic would that be? That'd be super cool. I kind of weirdly feel like he would do it. Like, if he was in town, he, he might just come to Williamsburg. Didn't his son have, like, a bar in South Williamsburg Yes, or something? and he would randomly go oh, and yeah, DJ. Yeah, yeah. So, see, he could even DJ. Yeah, oh, down, yeah. He could do a whole thing. And he, I feel like Bill Murray definitely was DJing for a moment. Yes, and yeah. he bartends his son's parties. Okay. I know it's not like fully music related, but I, I think it would we could like, tie it in, you we, know? We could tie it in. We could tie it in for sure. Um, that's, Hell yeah. Let's get Bill Murray up in here. All right, cool. Bill Murray, Bill Murray you heard please it. come to Baselines and Manager. Come over to Kinfolk. We love you. <laughs>
All right, so we have our final part of this I'm segment. I'm so excited for this. The present. Here we Church. go. I'm so really for you, Savannah. I hope. I don't got. know. I'm not going to hope. I'll just see what it is. <laughs> Hold on. <laughs> what am I going to fucking do with this, Smirch? That's so functional. What are you talking an about? Oxcord. We got an ox cord because, Savannah, <laughs> you are the plug. <laughs> Coming to an Uber near you. Literally. Um, thank you, You've Smirch. You've done so much. For yourself as well, so many other people. Spurge. And I felt like that, outside of the fact you're going to need that to DJ, because he's DJing after this. <laughs> yeah, so I, have, I have a playlist <laughs> locked and loaded. Ten songs. <laughs> so outside of the immediate use, it's because you've done a lot since I met you. Actually, on his music video. So, to, you know, we did. Even connect with, like, getting us here at Kimvolk. This is her, by the way. So Shout out Jonas. Yeah, shout out Jonas. So, Thank you. Thanks for that's, I saw that and I was How like... Many, I've done five shout-outs at least. <laughs> who else should we shout-out? I don't know. Who should we shout-out right now? <laughs> Mom, you're never going to see this. Shout-out. <laughs> Mom. <laughs> I All don't right. know. Angel, nap god. Yeah. Shout-out to Angel. <laughs> He's the one who's like, we need to do something. <laughs> that's it. Okay. All right. Thanks for having me. Of course. Thanks for being here. You're welcome. Cool. Let's get this DJ set going. Oh, <laughs> 